In this video, we have a look at the new module, which is called Color Balance RGB. And if you thought Filmic was complicated, well, uh, this one's um, even more complicated. Um, no, truly, there is a real paradigm shift between what we did before with color and what is happening now. We need to define quite a few words like chrominance, brightness, saturation, and some others. Um, we're going to have to do a little bit of maths, oh, sorry. And we will finish with um, a photo, a real one, that I'll uh, edit with you with the new uh, module and see how that works out. So this is going to be an adventure. Off we go. Now, let's start in this little notepad. Um, and I'd like to define a few words. Uh, these words are um, going to be a necessity. Uh, if we want to understand what's happening and what's going on in the uh, color balance RGB module. Uh, let's start with a good old CIE graph. Um, if you don't know what it is, I would suggest uh, you go and see the video that I made on color spaces and the REC 2020 color space. And um, here we have, um, just to recapitulate, here we have the visible light um, which is in the horseshoe shape here, which is made of monochromatic lights at different wavelengths, so from 460 nanometers to 620 odd nanometers. And all the visible, um, well, what the human eye can see is in the, in the center there. So chromaticity and chrominance. Chromaticity is a description of the color, um, exactly what it is. Um, so let's say if I choose this color here, which is an orange, then what is this? Well, I could describe it just by giving the coordinates here because we have two axes, X and Y, and I could give its coordinates in this color, uh, X, Y, Z, or X, Y, Y color space, and that would give its chromaticity. Remember that there's a third axis that um, is perpendicular to the screen, which goes towards you where the colors get uh, lighter and more towards white and as they move away from you it gets darker down to black so there is a third coordinate which would give the um, the y value the luminance value of the color so three coordinates that gives you the chromaticity okay we don't need that today chrominance chrominance or chroma chroma you'll find this in the um, in the module chroma so to define chroma, we need to be in a workspace, in a color space. This is not um, a color space in the sense that we, um, we're talking about for software. So when you've chosen your three um, primary colors, you also have to choose a white point. Now the white point is the place where the three values of red, green and blue are equal. And for the REC 2020, it's called D65 and it is somewhere around here. Its coordinates are defined and we know exactly where it is. So if I choose a colour, let's choose this one, then what is the chrominance or the chroma? Well the chroma is the distance between the white at the same luminance value and the colour I've chosen. So I'm only in a, this two-dimensional in this plane here and it's the distance between the two. So chroma, if you reduce chroma you go to grey. Um, if you increase chroma, as you increase chroma, well, you go towards um, the uh, spectrum of visible light. So here you go closer and closer towards a monochromatic colour, um, which has actually one single wavelength. So chrominance, I would say, is something that goes from grey to pure. Um, now there's something else I need to show you really is because um, that's what people call saturation. It's what has been called saturation in software ever since I've been doing photography. Um, if I just show you here, I get affinity photo on top. And here I have exactly that. I have um, a gradient I made before here. Now, let's go just show you the two colors. On the left here, I have a color which in HSL has a hue of 201 
a saturation of 100 and a luminance of 70. And to make the gradients, if I want to desaturate, well, the idea is to keep the same hue and the same luminosity and just to change the saturation to zero. So 201, 170. And if I go on the other one, I have 201, 0, 70. And you all know that when you on this software, when you put the saturation to zero, you get gray. You've seen that before. But this is just to show you that I'm going from gray to the color exactly in the same way that I'm going from the white point or the white at the same luminance to the color. So this is what um, other software is calls uh, saturation. But the real word is chrominance. So let's remember that. And that asks another question, is what is um, saturation? Oh dear. Well, that's coming up. Second one, uh, number two, two other words, lightness. And are these um, uh, reflectance? These new words are coming in pairs. Why do they come in pairs? Because there is one which is what I perceive, the lightness, and the reflectance is the physical property of the objects in, in real life. And we all know that what we perceive is not quite the same um, as what, uh, what might physically happen. And brightness will go with luminance. Yes, I know, oh dear, oh dear. Well, we'll get through it. Lightness, brightness, those are perceptual and those are the ones we'll find in software because in software we're not dealing with a real life object. Um, it, well, it's like painters. Um, it's photography, painting. It's all about what perception we have. So what is lightness? Um, well, lightness is perceived reflectance. And what is reflectance? It is the amount of light that is... Um, reflected from a from a, a surface so um, if uh, sorry I don't want to do that if uh, an object reflects let's say 90% of the light it receives then it, we will perceive it as white and if it reflects less than 3% of um, light then we will perceive it as black and that is the lightness, so it's from black to white. Now, brightness and luminance are different because um, brightness is something that will go from um, dim to bright. Um, this will go from dim to bright. So it's got to do with the um, amount of light that is emitted. Um, let's say um, the the more luminance there is then the um, more I've got the impression that um, it's there's some light being emitted so a surface let's say could look very bright if you look if you think of um, uh, the bonnet of a car in uh, in sunlight it could be a bright color blue gray green whatever you like with the sun shining on it if you're just looking at the metal paintwork of a car then that is very bright why is it bright um it's something that is, can actually hurt your eyes the brightness um it's actually um the 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 luminance is high we perceive a high brightness um but we can still see the colour, and that is something that is uh, magical in the eye. Is It's not because something has a lot of luminosity, it's very bright, that we actually lose the idea of the colour. We still see the uh, car as being red. Um, so there are two different things um, between lightness and brightness. Um, so how am I going to um, get through that in dark table? Well, we'll manage. Uh, there's something else I want to talk about is saturation now. Now saturation is a difficult one to get through. What I understand of saturation 
This is how I've read it explained several times in different places, so I'm sure it's a good idea. If you have a colour, let's say red, imagine you have red paint. Well, we've all done this before. Um, if you want to uh, paint a wall and the colour you find it um, well not quite right, well sometimes we dilute the paint with a white. And if you dilute a paint with white, well, you are desaturating it. So a, a, a desaturated red would be pink. And if you saturate, so the opposite thing would be to remove white or I uh, suppose to add black then it would get darker and richer and you'd get kind of this dark uh, rich red and it's not at all the same as adding chroma where the colour becomes pure if you saturate it becomes a richer in colour and that is something that is judged um, by the, the eye, by the brain always in relation of what there is around it um, it's the brain works in strange ways um, anyway uh, let's have a little look at another graph just to uh, conclude on this part and get back I'll get into the word uh, dark table here are two graphs one from Munsell's book of color Munsell is a painter who studied this and you can still get the patches of paint uh, so it's tools for painters so they can represent objects under different lightings and have them looking natural so we have oh, four things to look at. First of all, let's look at the lines of uniform saturation. These red lines here are lines of uniform saturation, which means that if an object is painted either in this nearly black color or this red or this one here, we have the same saturation. They are not at the same uh, brightness they're not at the same luminance and they're not at the same chroma but they have the same saturation they have the same richness about them if you look at these here along this line here this is nearly vertical here then these um, colors all have the same saturation but different brightnesses different chromas and different uh, br uh, brightness lightness and chroma there if you look at the other lines the gray lines that draw them that draw together they have this these patches have the same brightness so we ha they they it's as if they're emitting uh, the same amount of light so these are bright colors but different saturations these are bright a little bit is less bright a little less bright and these colors are not very bright at all but they have the same brightness um, and that is independent of the lightness which goes from zero to one which is from black to white and the chroma and the chroma is how spectrally pure they are um, you'll notice uh, if we look at this one here on the right which comes from the dark table uh, documentation um, we have there are loads and loads of patches here which are done in the srgb color space um, so lightness from black to white chroma which is how pure the color is uh, or how close we are to a monochromatic light um, you'll notice that there is not the same amount of chroma um, for different lightnesses of color for these greens for example well the lighter greens have a lot more uh, disposable chroma whereas if you have a dark green then this is the most pure color you can get after there's nothing in the RGB workspace um, and if you had blues let's say blue uh, the the uh, primary blue is darker so the primary blue might have a lightness of about 20 30 percent it would have lots of chroma in the dark blues and very little in the in, in the bright blues but that is um, that is how the uh, srgb and the rec 2020 being bigger is um, is not the, the magical solution for that i mean chroma is limited and it's not even for each uh, lightness and each hue, uh, each chrom uh, chromaticity you choose. Um, so there are limits. So we can't move past these on the chrome on the chroma scale. 
Now the brilliance, if we cross, if we choose a line that goes from black to any patch, this patch here, this line is the line of brilliance, which means that it is the same, um, it's as if it was the same object emitting more and more light. Um, and we, at one point it stops. We can't go any brighter than this. Um, so yeah, brilliance, that's the, that's the French one, this is brightness. It's because I do the videos in both languages, so sometimes I have some bits in French, some bits in, in English, anyway, brightness. Saturation is, this is, I, I like this because it's maths, it's a perpendicular line. So if you want to have a higher saturation, well, you just take the line of, brilliant, of brightness and you do a perpendicular line. You can see that the more saturated the colour, the more chroma there is and the less lightness. Um, it is actually not a straight line because if you do a bit of maths, then on this line here, on this line of brightness, well, the saturation would be perpendicular, it would be like this. And on if you reach here, well, and you do a right angle, well, it would be actually here. So, um, saturation is an arc, really. This is a line of saturation, which is brilliant because if you saturate a colour, and from what I know, there is no way to do proper saturation in Lightroom Capture One or Photoshop. This is the proper saturation as it is defined in the book of colour. Uh, so it wasn't defined by Darktable. It is, the developers have actually used the proper definitions of saturation. We've actually got a slider to do saturation. It will enable us to get richer colours without maybe... Um, without uh, moving out of gamut. The gamut is the uh, the available colours and the, the white here everywhere around is out of gamut. So if I just added chroma, let's say, to this colour, then I might have, um, how, many, how many steps? Well, one, two. I have one, two steps of chroma. But in saturation, I have one, two, three steps maybe of saturation. So I can actually get more colour out of a photo. Um, so we have a chroma slider, a lightness slider, a brightness slider, and a saturation slider, and they all do different things. Um, so let's go and have a look at that in dark table straight away. Okay, so here we are in dark table, and I've just opened up a picture I made in Affinity Photo. So I have three different strips. I have one which I made by taking um, in LAB mode, I took a red 50% uh, saturation, 50% lightness, and did a gradient till I had a blue 50% uh, saturation and 50% lightness, uh, just to see what's happened. Here I took on the second band here, I took the primary green on the left and I desaturated, so I took off chromaticity, if you uh, followed the first part, down to grey. Um, so um, that's the second gradient and the third one is just a simple white to black gradient and let's have a look at this color balance module here which has uh, three tabs master four ways and masks and a load of sliders so let's go through those one by one and see what they do the first one we need to look at uh, the first thing is chroma saturation and brightness perceptual brilliance grading so that is what we call brightness so chroma will take us we said to purer colors on the um, on the light uh, on the light spectrum so here if I turn that the colors are becoming purer and if I make it lower they're becoming grayer and we could only, only can go to minus 50 so they're not going to become uh, absolutely gray but here the colors are getting closer and closer to um, a single wavelength in the uh, light spectrum. That is what chroma is. What the other software call saturation. Saturation, we said, was like mixing white paint and black paint to make colours richer or more pastel. So if I up the saturation, then these colours are getting darker, look, getting darker. And if I lower it, they are getting lighter. I'm mixing them, especially if you look in the blues and the reds at the top here. You get the impression that the colours have been mixed with white. Look, I have a blue there and I'm mixing white paint. 
if I want some nice pastel colours for the walls of a room, let's say. Or here we have some pastel greens. And that is a new slider, which is not available in other software, to my knowledge. Uh, that's what's so brilliant about it. We can actually get now pastel colours or dark rich colours without um, leaving uh, the gamut of our workspace or at least uh, having a reasonable uh, um, a reasonable probability of not leaving it anyway. So that that is new and that is absolutely that is brilliant for me. I, I love the saturation slider. The third one is brightness, so I'm going to make the colours more emissive in light. So now they're getting brighter. So it's like I was shining a light on them and they are reflecting back into my eyes. Or oh, they're getting dimmer, I'm turning the lights down. Yeah. So that is something we didn't have either before. So brightness, saturation and chroma, three different things because they have different effects on the colours. And that is what we're going to have to learn how to use on uh, editing. Well, the first step is to know what they are. Uh, notice that the first two sliders do not change the uh, gradient between white and black. Look, if I move this, the third one is not changing. If I move saturation, the colours at the bottom are not changing. But if I move brightness, then it's becoming brighter and darker. So it, there is a change of luminosity, a perceptual change of luminosity with brightness. Um, each of these three sliders, um, we can decompose into the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I can just add chroma in the shadows, remove chroma in the shadows, or in the highlights. So that's what those are. It's the same thing, just repeated in different areas of the photo, depending on um, what luminance they have. Now this is controlled. Now let's go to the third one by masks. Let's have a look at this. So we have the traditional black to white on the x-axis and we have transparent, uh, so 0% effect to 100% effect on the left. Uh, and three curves, one for the shadows. So this is the shadows. So the shadows cover all the dark parts and the the closer we get towards uh, the light, well, the more transparent the zone becomes, so the less effect uh, the sliders and move will have on the picture. Notice they do have an effect, nearly a slight effect, nearly to the whites. Um, but I think perceptually, it, it, well, it doesn't change anything. Perceptually, I won't see it. The whites, uh, this one here that's white, so it starts off at zero because we're in the dark colours and the closer we get to the whites, the closer we are to the highlights. So the highlights around here at um, complete opacity and very transparent when we're near the blacks. And the third one, which is um, like a Gaussian curve here, is the mid-tones and that will adjust automatically. So I can only adjust shadows and highlights and the actual shape of this will change uh, automatically. What I can change um, is where I think the grey is. So I can move the greys to the right, I can move the greys to the darks here. Um, notice that the width will change and the height will change as well if I move. I can actually change the height of the middle grey mask. The middle grey mask is never more here. I'm about 50% opacity. So whatever I do to the mid-tones will only have an effect at 50% maximum. Uh, if I change the fall off of the shadows, if I make them fall off, I can hear with big number, um, it has two effects actually. The first one, if you notice that the 100% covers a larger range of luminosities and then it falls down quickly. Whereas if I lower it, then I'm not even getting 100% effect now, even in black. So I've got less effect in the darks. Well, this effect will carry on further through the luminance range and maybe to even some visible parts in the lights. So that is a question of taste. Um, and it's the same for the highlights here. Highlights, I can make it um, kind of very steep on a nice shallow curve. So let's reset that. Um, so that is what will happen. Uh, those are the zones affected here by shadows, midtones, and highlights here in the three brightness, saturation, and chroma, or brilliant saturation and chroma. Um, you can actually see these masks 
Okay, we have a little button here. I just want to see the shadows. So what happens is we get uh, some checkers, grey and uh, white checkers, and whatever shows through the checkers are the zones that um, are affected. So in the shadows, what can I see? Sorry, I just knocked the microphone over. Ah, what can I see? I can see some reds, well, some of the ends of the reds here and the blues. I can see some of the blacks here. Um, there's not much of the green showing through. The middle grey, so I can see some middle grey showing through here. I can see some middle grey, bit of green. It's not very hazy, it's a bit fuzzy. It's not very easy to see through, really. This one here is much easier to see um, in the highlights. All this, everything showing through. The greens are all, these are all highlights. And the whites here the highlights. So that's the way to see them. Um, okay, now next one these three slides at the beginning these are quite easy hue shift does a rotation of the hues so i'm actually rotating around the gray point so the colors will all change it's a good way if you want to change the color of an object um if you want to change uh i don't know the color of a t-shirt or something uh, with a local mask um and you just turn here rotate that Vibrance is adding what they say colourfulness. I'm not sure whether it means chroma or something else really, but it will add it. Um, it will differentiate the the, the colours that have low chroma, so those who have high chroma. The vibrance is something we know a little bit about because we have vibrance in uh, Lightroom and uh, other software, where it'll have more effect on the low chroma uh, colours. So that can be useful. And contrast here, if I add the contrast, so you know what contrast does. Contrast will brighten the bright areas and darken the dark areas. And there's a pivot point, the uh, what they call the fulcrum, where here, let's say it's the mid gray. Well, everything to the left of this will get brighter and everything to the right will get darker. And you can change this uh, in the masks. This is the contrast gray fulcrum which is at 18.45%, so mid-grey, so bang in the middle. If I move this to the right, then I'm actually saying that mid-grey is here. So everything on the left is getting lighter and everything to the right is getting darker. And if I move it to the left, then I've moved the mid-grey, let's say, here. So everything to the left is getting lighter and everything to the right is getting darker. So that is a way to adjust contrast with this module. Uh, so that's that for this one. Four ways now. Now this is for colour grading. This is the four ways. It's the colour grading part. Um, we have luminance, hue and chroma in four different ways. The first one is global. Then we have it in the shadows, then in the highlights, and then power, which is for the midtones. So global luminance, that's just adding uh, luminance, adding more white or removing white from the colours. And otherwise I can add a hue, so I can choose, let's say, to add some purple. So I choose the hue and then with the chroma I can add more or less of this to the image, uh, which you can see much better here in the bottom part because that was in greys. Um, here I can add different hues to the picture. They are being added everywhere, but more or less visible. Uh, let's reset that. And you can do the same in the highlights and the shadows, which is uh, you'll get your typical uh, teal and orange. If you want to do a typical teal and orange, well, I'll choose a teal in the shadows. Uh, I'll add some teal in the shadows. That's a green, actually. Teal in the shadows. Some orange in the highlights. And there are teal and orange. And you can adjust with the masks here where you want, um, you know, if I want the highlights. Here, if I move the, the fall off of the highlights, I've got less of an effect here. And the highlights more there. And, uh, well, that's the way to go. The last thing for this uh, very technical part of the video is uh, power. Now, power is luminance in the midtones. So I add luminance in the midtones, remove luminance in the midtones. 
but this can pose a problem. Let's show. Let's have a look at the value of this pixel here with a colour picker. Let's add that 254, 254, 254. It's nearly white. So if I add luminance, I would expect the mid tones to get brighter. I wouldn't expect this to move very much. And what actually happens can be surprising because what actually happens if I add uh, luminance, then this color has actually gone darker. And that is not correct. And if I remove luminance, it's actually gone from 254 to 256. So that's not correct. Now, what is happening and why and uh, how do we get around that? Okay, well, it's time for some maths. Yeah, sorry. Uh, here we have, uh, let's get this back to zero. Okay, this is a graph to represent what's happening with the lift, gain and power. Three different sliders. It's a very simplified model just to show um, an idea of what's happening. So lift, what's happening when I move the lift up is it's lifting the curve up. This is the curve of luminance. So luminance um, in the input image from zero to one and luminance in the output image, which is between zero and one. So here if I lift the luminance above the diagonal, then anything that had a luminance of 0 0.2 in input would now have a, a luminance of 0 0.40 something in output. So it's got brighter. If we're over the diagonal, it's getting brighter. And if we're underneath it, it's getting darker. So it affects the shadows more than the highlights. Um, that's why it says shadow. But it does affect the whole range. Now, I think in this module, the masks um, are taken into account. So the effect on the highlights would be lesser than what we have here. But as I said, this is just a simple model. If I change the gain, uh, yeah, with a formula, if I have a gain of a lift of zero, the gain doesn't work. So the gain is pretty much the same thing, but gain is for um, highlights. So here I'm lowering the highlights. Here's a rotation, if you like, of the line around a point in the shadows. So. Um, here I'm actually, this one goes the wrong way actually, compared to what we have. This I'm adding gain so it's getting brighter. And here I'm removing gain so it's getting um, darker. The effect being much more in the highlights than in the shadows. Okay, and what does power do? Well power changes my line to a curve. So here, it goes the wrong way as well. This is this is a negative power. So here I'm darkening, so it's like I was moving it to the left. Never mind. This is getting dark. It actually changes it into a curve. So everything between 0 and 1 is darker. And the effect is bigger in the midtones. Here the gap is bigger. In the highlights and in the shadows, the gap is smaller. So that's why we say it has an effect in the midtones, even if it does have an effect everywhere on each value of lumens. Um, the problem is, though, um, I'll just put that to zero just to have it here. Between zero and one, it's getting darker. But if you've got, if we're after one, what I wanted darker is getting lighter. Um, and I don't forget that in a scene referred workflow, luminance is not blocked at one. That's for display referred. But in scene referred, luminances can theoretically go to infinity. So let's say I have a very bright color in the picture at 1.2. Well, its output value would be now 1.25, let's say. So it's our 1.3, so it's actually got brighter. Whereas the power here, I lowered the power. And that's exactly what I showed you with the what happened. My white, when I lowered the power, got brighter. And if I um, increase the power here, so to make everything brighter, well, everything that's after one has all of a sudden got darker because the one point, something 1.2 luminance would now have an output value of 1.1. Uh, 1. 1. Um, because there's a pivot. The pivot is at one. Um, that's something that needs to be neutralized. And we do have it. So this is the white fulcrum. A fulcrum is a pivot point. 
So what do you do to set the white fulcrum? Well, it's automatic. You just press on the button. Now here I'm going to do be a little bit. It chooses in the rectangle you have the brightest point and it says, well, your brightest point is at plus 0 0.22 EV. So now if I go into the four ways, why does it that? Four ways. And I increase the power, then my white here has got brighter. So it's working correctly. And if I reduce it, it's got darker. So now it's working. There we are. That is something that needs to be done automatically. Now, why it's not calculated automatically, um, I don't know. Maybe it's not possible. Uh, maybe it'll come later. But anything that has high dynamic range, you need to set the white fulcrum here before you touch power. Um, and there we are for this technical part. And I suggest to end the video that um, we see an example of uh, how to use all this, uh, let's say in real life. The first example I'd like to work on is this photo here. Um, which is a bit dull because nothing has been done with it. It's a raw file. Um, so I started a series on um, objects that people just dump on the pavement and uh, expect uh, someone else to uh, look after or get rid of. I don't know. So anyway, there was this armchair uh, on the pavement. This was taken in Paris. Um, so just to go through a quick work flow um, check the input color profile is in linear rec 2020 so no problem there the exposure to set the exposure I'm going to go to this little light bulb here to get the photo with a white border which will enable me to assess where white is so I know that this photo needs quite a lot of extra exposure until I get somewhere around there and then we'll adjust filmic so to get filmic adjusted, I need just to set the white and black relative exposures. The gray point here is the one I've just done with the exposure module. So maybe if I want to get the bright colors, the bright areas a bit brighter. So maybe somewhere around there. I can also click on the, uh, on the automatic uh, adjustment there, which is a bit lower than what I had. I'll move that back up a little bit. And the relative black exposure, I'll move that one up. So the, the dark areas are getting darker. I can check here with the um, clipping indication, just to check if at one point I'm going to start clipping blacks, which is happening here. So maybe avoid clipping the blacks and get something that looks a little bit like this. And now we're in uh, version five of Filmic uh, the contrast and latitude um, are two adjustments we can also do safely. Um, check your RV5 and you do have the two uh, safe options here with the contrast in highlights and shadows before doing that or else you're going to destroy the curve. It will just go completely out of shape. Um, we need to keep an S curve. So contrast, let's move the contrast, the global contrast of the image up a little bit a bit more contrast in there and the latitude will we can move that up as well the latitude um, will enable me to have a bit more color um, in the uh, highlight areas and the darker areas well here I'm looking actually at the seat which is quite light so if I'm new move the latitude up a bit then I might get a little bit more color there see what's happening here if you're looking here at this area if I move the latitude down it losing chrome it's going grey and here I'm getting a little bit more colour in there. Check that the toe area here is nice and smooth uh, with this straight line um, in between the two points of latitude and the shoulder here we have a nice smooth curve so we don't have any um, any hard transitions anywhere. That's filming done so nothing very difficult about that. Let's remove those two warnings, go back to the full screen and now colour balance RGB, let's switch that on so for the balance there's nothing happening. Um, so we have chroma, saturation and brilliance um, and vibrance. 
So vibrance is for the low chroma areas. Let's move vibrance up and check what the difference between vibrance and global chroma is. These are both adjustments on chroma, if I've understood things correctly. Although this does say increases colorfulness, but this one says, uh, yeah, increases colorfulness. I suppose they're both chroma. Let's move that right up. So I've added quite a lot of color into that. So it's less gray. Moving chroma up and down will turn your colors from the uh, gray at the same luminance and away from the gray towards the more pure colors of the, uh, um, towards a more, uh, what I would call that, um, a monochromatic light on the, uh, the light spectrum of uh, visible light. So it's more colorful. So that's global vibrance up um, and we'll check, we'll take a snapshot. So I have a snapshot of that. Let's reset that and move the global chroma up. And we can see that it's getting more colorful too. And let's check the difference between the two. Normally I should see um, that in the low chroma areas. So let's think about this chair here would have a more of a boost than on the higher chrome area, so the blue and the reds here, which are more colourful. So let's see, if I click on this, then down the screen, I have on the left the snapshot, so that was when the vibrance was way up, and on the right I have the global chroma way up. So if we're looking at the door, then when I move the vibrance up, and the door was less colourful than if I moved the global chroma, which is what I was expecting because it was already quite colourful. And I should see a little bit of a difference. The difference is a bit more subtle. I'm looking at the blues there um, on the shop window. If I now look at the chair, the chair should be about equally colourful. Uh, well, that's what I'd expect because it wasn't very colourful, so Vibrant should have pushed it quite high, and global chroma will push it quite high too. I shouldn't see too much of a difference and that is right I don't see much of a difference on the chair but I can see quite a difference on the red door behind you see um, so that's the difference between uh, global chroma and vibrance okay so let's get rid of that and now see what the others do global saturation will uh, mix in white uh, paint if I move it down so the colours will get lighter, more pastel. And if I move it up, they'll get darker and richer. Let's see, the door should be a good, uh, this red door, I think is a good thing to look at. If I move the uh, saturation, it's actually getting quite dark now. So we have to be careful of not exceeding the gamut and not going into the blacks if it gets too dark. Now I'm not there, so that is a very rich red now. And if I move the saturation down, it's getting lighter and lighter. Um, so that's mixing with white. It's not mixing with grey. It looks a bit grey. It's actually not mixing with grey. It's mixing with white. If I move the chroma down, I have something that is darker because it's moving. Chroma will, if you remove chroma, it'll, rem it'll get you closer to the grey point at the same luminance and this door is uh, of the same luminosity. This door is quite dark so if I move the chroma down it will move me to a darkish grey whereas if I remove saturation it's adding white so it's, it's actually diluting the colour with white so it's getting lighter and here it's getting dark which is quite nice. It's nice if I put it somewhere there I do have the idea that this is a nice dark red uh, paint. I quite like the door like that. So that is uh, saturation, the difference between saturation and chroma. And the last one is brilliance. So brilliance, remember, well, if I add brilliance, I um, make the surfaces reflect more light so they become more emissive as if they are emitting light, um, which doesn't seem to correspond to this photo at all because it was taken when there was hardly any light at all. It was kind of a dull day. So if I make the surfaces more emissive, well, um, as you see, if I do this, I'll make them more emissive. It's, I'm just adding some kind of brightness. I mean, why not? But it's not actually doing much to the picture about just making it a bit brighter. So it is adding chroma and uh, lightness. 
Um, but there's nothing really extraordinary happening to the colours there. You see, and if I remove brightness, I'm making it dim. I'm dimming the lights, if you like. There we are. So that's not working very well for this picture. Um, it will work on um, on the next one. We're going to look now. I think I'm going to stop there for this photo, and um, we'll do a real uh, example uh, on the real edit on the next photo, which would be nicer. Okay, so let's look at another photo then. So here I am in the full screen light table and the aim is to use the filmic RGB module, not the filmic, the colour balance RGB module to go from this rather dull image to something like this. Okay, let's see how to do that. So escape and let's go here. Um, get rid of the film strip so it is a duplicate I actually um, edited this photo and um, I quite liked the editing I did so I duplicated it so I wouldn't lose it uh, what do we have um, what has been done uh, not much um, the exposure so let's enable this should be enabled so what did I do there's a bit of lightning in the exposure I'm not going to go through everything and filmic now filmic I have got quite a lot of contrast. This is what I did in Filmic. Um, I've preserved the highlights and I've gone for quite a contrasty look. Um, the colour calibration is done, so I have something that's um, well, what's called a starting point. Um, let's see what colours there are in here. So colour balance, RGB, this is completely at zero. And let's see what we can do with that. Um, maybe the first thing to do is to add some chroma. Now built into this um, module there is actually um, some uh, gamut checking, softening, I don't know exactly what, what to call it, but you can go quite wild with these sliders and still stay in uh, gamut. So um, I want something quite colourful so I'm not going to hesitate, I'm going to go and add a ton of chroma and if that's not enough it blocks at 50% you can right click and add on up to 100% so there I've added on um, 100% uh, I don't think I'm out of gamut you can do the gamut checking here gamut checking okay so I've got a little bit of blue I'm not too worried about that um, as long as I can see all the details um, I'd like to uh, maybe add something in the midtones. Let's see if I can see the midtones. What do I have? The shadows. Well, the shadows, because there's quite a lot of shadows. These trees are in shadow. The lower part of the image is quite in shadow, too. The midtones. Here I have some of the sky here. Um, some of the upper branches of the midtones. And the highlights. There I have. Um, in the same areas. I have some of the leaves here in the highlights, some of those very um, orange ferns that are highlights. I'm not going to change that. What I'm going to do, um, let's turn that off, is I'm going to add some chroma to the highlights. So I know I'm affecting these areas here because then what I want to do is kind of see the light um, sifting through the trees. There. So what have I done so far? I've gone from that and you get the impression it was in black and white before. Oh, colour. Oh, that's nice. Well, that wouldn't be bad. We can do a little bit better, I think. Um, let's add a bit of saturation. Now, the mid-tones. If I add saturation in the mid-tones, then I'm going to get some richer colours in the mid-tones. Now, I have some mid-tones down here. You can see, if you want to see where the mid-tones are, just move a slider. So these mid-tones, these ferns down here, this patch here, if I add a bit of saturation to the mid-tones, um, you can see you can only go to 25%. Well, okay, let's stop about there. And maybe in the highlights, this light coming through, it's give it, get it a, so it will make it richer and darker, you see. We get a bit more a richer light, and here we get a pastel, clearer light. Now I want it to be a little bit richer, because that is one of the main focus points of the photo, is those lights coming through, and these very... Uh, nice oranges 
on the ferns in the autumn. Um, so that's uh, the saturation. That seems to be okay. I don't want to saturate the. Um, I don't want to saturate the uh, the shadows because these trees I want them to keep them kind of grayish. Um, I don't want to change those too much. See if I saturate these, I'm afraid that there might be a color cast on them. At the best, it might not do much. Uh, okay, I want to leave those. Um, if I want to have the, the impressions more light, then that is the brilliance. So uh, in the highlights, it seems like a good idea to add. Look what it's doing to the lights there. There's more light coming through, look. Oh, it's like I added a light source. That is interesting. I really like that. I added lots of light through. Um, and that we brightened up before and after. That is a different photo, isn't it? Let's go in the four ways here. And I'd like to add um, a bit of um, colour grading to the shadows and to the highlights. So um, in the shadows here, the shadows are already very orangey. I think I'd like to add a little bit more orange, an orangey yellow let's say around here. Oh, around there it's orange. And add just a little bit. I'll add a lot just to see what's happening. Look, there, that is way overboard, but look, I'm adding a little bit of extra colour in all the darker parts of the photo so that is really brightening up the uh, the, sh the shadows and the highlights I like to add a bit of colour grading into those highlights um, so um, maybe uh, I could add a blue kind of yeah kind of a bluey green here just add a little bit not to add too much. If I add too much, that is way, way overboard. If I add just a little bit, I can add a bit of character, maybe, to that light coming through. That's too much. Um, yeah, maybe just that. Just to add a little bit. Now, what happens if I add a bit of luminance to the highlights? No, that's affecting the whole lot too much. You see, it's not the same as... Uh, it's not at all the same as adding um, this perceptual brilliance. Um, so there we are. Well, that, that is edited. Look, I went from there to there. Um, there's a the last thing I did. I don't know if I should show you this. Um, what did I do? What have I done? What have I done? Uh, I have a 3.7 dev uh, build. Uh, I did this. Look to it. And there we are. The autumn effect look at that beautiful so uh, there we are I don't know if I should show you that okay that's coming I'm not quite sure exactly how it works but it's already built in and I thought wow that looks good so now I have this dreamy look on the forest and that's the final photo and hopefully that will give you uh, some incentive to um, work out for yourselves uh, how to use this module okay and I'll, I'll leave you there and see you on the next video